Hello everybody, this is here. It's important to say that they have a 3D code channel and I explain all the settings of 3D code in depth. And the 3D code settings are pretty much the same as inside 3D code print. So this is going to be a video, a brief video about 3D code print. But if you want to go really in depth, just check out this playlist with the 3D code introduction. And now let's uh, jump to the video. Let's get started. So I opened the 3 code print. We have this window. So just uh, close it. So then I have the measurement options. I just go with the defaults for this. You can go read through them if you want to modify them. Uh, do read these hints because these hints are quite helpful and they explain what's going on with different tools. We have by default the primitives on and we also have this really important sculpt tree. So what's important to understand about 3D code, it deals with voxels and voxels, they're like 3D pixels. So they actually have volume to them. Right now, this, this cube there is just kind of, is not committed to this layer, this volume layer. So I need to click apply on this pop-up to create a square of a, a cube there. So then what's a bit confusing, it still stays there. Uh, like we still have that yellow preview. What you have to do is just, you wanna cross that and maybe switch to a different tool. And that will actually show you an existing, uh, what, you, what you've done, what you've created. Since we have something in the viewport, let's talk about the viewport control. So if I right click and drag, I can zoom in and out. If I alt click and do left mouse, drag i will uh, rotate and middle mouse is to pan pan around i switch to this blob tool and this blob tool if i just drag i will get these uh, volumes around right so they are dependable on the camera angle most of the tools have the pop-ups and here it's kind of up to you to go and explore them and you can see at the bottom we have our poly count. The poly count is really dependent on the density of our voxel layer. You can see here it says four ricks. I can, if I press spacebar, I can resample this uh, layer and make it more dense or less dense. So I think actually it's getting a bit dense. So I want to resample it and make it less dense. So I have this slider here. I can just slide it down uh, to like say 200,000. And now it will lose some definition because we are going down uh, in the resolution. If I press five, I will exit the perspective mode. I'll go into orthogonal mode. And then I can actually say draw with this blob tool on the surface from different angles without having that camera perspective distortion. You can see the material here has this kind of lines like 3D printed layers. So this is just like a preview material. You can change the material here in this step and so to whatever you prefer the 3d printed materials they're here you can browse through them 3d code has a powerful symmetry tool if i go here at the top uh, press s enable symmetry and enable different axes and say pick from bound box i can then say create a lot of different volumes with symmetry i can also go and pick a symmetry point somewhere else and set it up here a very important menu is on a button E. If I press on it, I can have different shapes for our blob tool. So then I can create circles instead of uh, squares or rectangulars with different shapes instead of circles and use the lasso tool to create these random shapes. Once our layer gets a bit too messy, uh, we can go into to the controls of the layer and click clear current object. So that will just clear the whole layer. However, we still have the density there. So uh, I, I can still go and draw something in the space. Then I can click on the duplicate button right here. And any button here, if you hold and put an, uh, press an end button, you can define a hotkey. So usually I have like a shift D or control D for the duplicate. So once I duplicated the layer, what happened is it automatically switched to a transform tool. So now I can move this volume away like an object. And layer can have uh, as many voxels as you possibly can. And you can have uh, thousands of objects on one uh, layer. They all kind of combine there and you can move them uh, as one. Another, if you, if you ever use Blender, you, you can press G on the keyboard and you can move it 
you can move this stuff like that without using the gizmo tool oh well you might as well uh, use gizmo and scale it up and down like that the gizmo right now is not really placed correctly so press shift to move it across or it can also go and say reset axis or to bound center and it will be placed in the bound center and then press g from the front and move it away and then say if i press g here i can just overlay them on top of each other it doesn't matter then i have move tool and with the move tool i can just move the volume around if i click through all volumes it will just start to affect all the layers all together pose tool works really well with the e menu so we can see here we can have a selection like that so i can select all these voxels and what happens here that if i select and move all these voxels across then they I've been moved, they turned into geometry, and we have a solid object. The polygons here are not stretched as it would normally happen in any other software. I can also go and pick one of those like uh, line tools, and I can have a more a gradient uh, selection. And then I can move it across like that. And again, I have this through all volumes turned on, so I'm hitting both layers at the same time. Cutoff tool. It's pretty easy and self-explanatory. You can just cut through the volumes really easily on the fly. And since I'm cutting through this volume, I want to hide that one. So I'll just press on the eye icon and it will hide the level. If I press it again, it will unhide it. We have measure tool to measure distance and we have 3D print support tool. I would not really recommend to use it that much. Usually any 3D, print, 3D printing slicer software can do a better job than what 3D print support tool does. And I have a bend tool which can bend depending on your uh, gizmo positioning. Barrelief tool is good for creating molding shapes. However, all the molding shapes are only available in the full 3D code license. So then we have a Vox slice a tool which is great for 3D, code, uh, for 3D printing because you can go and check what's inside your model. However, I, I did find that this tool can crash 3D code, so do make sure that you save your model before you start running it. When I click on the import, it will jump into the models on my right side, into this tab menu. You can go through different uh, tabs here and click on something that you might choose or you can bring your own mesh if you go with this select mesh you can bring in the obj or F, uh, fbx a very powerful tool is called sketch tool for that one i want to have an empty layer so i will go first of all resample this one to make it a bit uh, less dense so i'll drop the density to something like 80,000, just like 1x and i'll go clean the layer Right now, Sketch Tool doesn't show anything. I have to go and click here on that pin. And now it will show me a model that is made from three planes. I then can go in, press E, and then press Control, and do a negative shape, negative fill. Then I just drag and drop, and I can create a shape. So I go from the top, Control on the circle, and I can create this cut through. and this is then just generated from multiple sites. So you can see incredibly powerful in terms of creating some extremely complicated shapes if you just spend some time working with this because this stuff goes through and you can't really do it anywhere else so fast as you can do it in 3D code or 3D code print. Then you need to click apply to apply to the layer, layer. and there we go, I'll just switch to a different tool now we have our shape all committed to the voxel layer a snake spikes tube muscles is pretty much the same brush that creates these long tubes on the surface of the mesh and i just need to make sure that i pick one of those brushes here and just draw them freely around for whatever purpose i might have in mind 3 gold has a closed simulation tool it's not super powerful i need to click here on reset if i start to press start and then i press the brackets to make the brush bigger and then i can move this stuff around so that will kind of interact with the voxels i have there so say end seam and then go create closed objects and create so now we have 
a layer with the clothes simulation. Then we have a whole bunch of brushes. They're quite similar in their behavior. So press E menu, I'll pick some brush. Then I can go into edit brush parameters. And here you can spend some time modifying them, changing spacing, rotation, all that stuff. And then wet clay will be really similar to the regular brush. Extruder, also similar. A 2D paint brush is different. If I right click, I will define the surface where to paint on. And I will draw in this type of shapes. If I go here, I can pick a different alpha. So I pick, say, this square alpha. I can then just go and start to draw in more squarish shapes. Or if I switch to the rectangle or circular tool, it will be very similar to the blob tool. I can define the shape by right clicking. Uh, the, the plane by right clicking and just draw this stuff around. A plane brush acts as like a cut off tool, so I can define it by the plane and then just cut off with a rectangular tool uh, selection. Then I'll go to scrape, just uh, scraping off or melting these shapes around, which is cool with voxels because it can melt the shape away. Then pinch, which is that will do what it says, it'll just have to pinch stuff around. If I press right uh, with my right mouse, I will can push the sensitivity up and then I can pinch a lot more with this brush. Then I can smudge it and it will just create this type of effect, a bit strange. Maybe our trance is a bit too high, so I'll drop this uh, strands. Use my right mouse to and drag it to change the shape or to change the size of the brush, and then just start to do this to modify the and smudge the whole thing. The final comments are resolution output will up the resolution of the layer quite uh, significantly. I usually use a resample because I prefer to just to, to drag it up and down. Then we have the clear that will. Uh, remove everything from this layer, which I don't want to do. And then we have smooth all, which will smooth everything a little bit. Uh, usually the smooth is more evident if you have a less dense of a model. So if I drag it down and click smooth all, and I can go for like five iterations here, I will go and run it on the mesh and it will smooth it all. For a quick presentation, we can go into the top left corner and go from simplest to, to render. And it will make a little render. If I press a five on my numpad, it will create the uh, perspective view. And then I will just go, you know, make it brighter or less bright. And I can create lights, uh, change intensity, rotate them and play around and have something, you know, Pretty pretty nice to send to somebody for preview for for daily review. So I was really brief with all these tools, and I also have the 3D print room here that has other options that are not that important. However, all of these tools are really explained in depth on my 3D code videos because they are really exactly the same as inside 3D code. And I wanted just to show the uh, most important features of the software for you to pick it up and start creating.